Representing the bay boat category, the Seaborne FX25 Bay XE has an overall length of 24 feet 11 inches, a beam of 8 feet 9 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 350. Designed to easily navigate inshore waters and handle the chop offshore, she has a draft of 13 inches, a dead rise of 17 degrees, a dry weight of 2,600 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 68 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Okay, team, we're on the Seaborne FX25 XE, their top of the line model here. All right, we've got a very versatile bay boat. Offshore capable, we got a beautiful day. What'd you have in mind for us today, Rick? Well, we got too many decisions because there's nothing we can't do on a beautiful morning like this. I think we ought to start, George. Let's go hit a wreck and get some live bait. It works in 800 feet of water, it works in eight inches of water, and the boat can do both. All right, let's do that. How about we go hit one of these wrecks right out in front of the inlet? I'm ready. How's that sound to you? George, I'm ready. Put the throttle down and get the air conditioning going because it is hot today. It struck me on the way out today how much bay boats have evolved over the last 25 years. I was in the back of the boat today, rig and tackle. Everything I needed was right there. Today's bay boat comes ready to fish. This one was no exception. Now, before we even got to the inlet, I happened to notice some frigate birds watching something in the water. The boat was quick enough to get on plane, get us under those birds on time to get a bite from some Jack Cravels on a topwater plug. Now, I've run one of these boats before, and I know how well they handle the chop. We got lucky today and didn't have to deal with that at all. The ocean was slick, calm, and we went right to a bait spot. When we got to the bait spot, this is a really small piece of bottom that was hard to stay on top of. The Optimus steering on this boat really made it easy for me to constantly turn the wheel from one end of the access to the other. It was really nice to have it. I love the way the live well were set up, and here's the reason why. We had a great big one because we were catching a lot of thread fin herring, but my favorite live bait is the sardine. Well, we got a little live well off to the side to keep for special baits. We can put them right there as we take them off the sabiki. Out there catching bait all morning, I'm not gonna lie, it was a really hot day. We're coming into summer, and I kept going up to the bow to the insulated cooler, and I love that I didn't have to search for our drinks because there was a divider. You know, when we left the dock, I had no intention of bottom fishing. That's one of the great advantages of a good tackle center. All of a sudden, we wanted to try a bait on the bottom of a wreck. Lori was able to rig me up out of that tackle center. I fired a bait down looking for a grouper or a cobia. Didn't happen this time. There wasn't a lot of action for us there fish-wise, so we plugged in some numbers to a wreck that I know of up the beach a little ways and headed that way in hopes of getting a bite on the bottom. Bingo, the ocean was alive. It was easy to fight the fish there leaned up against the gunnel. That's what I like about a boat that's deep near the stern. Every day the ocean gives you something different. On that day, the ocean gave us a perfect sight fishing day. George hopped up in the tower, which changes everything once you get off the deck of the boat. We were able to cruise the beach, spot fish cruising everywhere, piled onto a big old school of starving jacks. Now the design on this second station was kind of unique. You could either stand on top of the console or jump up and sit with a back bolster and the seated position was really comfortable. It's not necessary to get 20 feet off the water to really increase your visibility. Just standing up on top of that console increases it threefold. As soon as we got on the beach, I noticed right away a bunch of activity and we got into a huge school of Jack Cravel. I was pleased with how easy it was to hop up on that platform and fire a shot into those jacks. George was able to track them perfectly and make it an easy cast right into the lead fish on the school. Bam, he crushed it. All right, so I'm gonna tell you about the beam of this boat. I love a wide beam. My husband always jokes and calls me twinkle toes because I'm kind of everywhere. I was able to turn and cast, no problem. I never felt like I was gonna fall off with my twinkle toes. Now after I got done catching a jack of my own, we had tons of live bait left over, and I wanted a chance to fish this boat inshore a little bit. George was up in the upstairs station, shot us back through that inlet. We were kicked back, could not have been more comfortable. When we arrived at a spot in the mangroves that I like to fish for snook a lot, this is gonna be a sight fishing environment, and it's shallow water. The boat proved really nimble in that shallow water, and it floated shallow, and getting up in that second station also provided me a vantage point to see the fish if they were up underneath the mangroves. We were looking for snook today. I was up on the bow casting. Didn't get one, but that's okay. It was great though, every time I did lose the bait, having that live well up in the bow, I didn't have to go all the way back to the stern, get my bait and come back out. It was right there. Now the snook weren't there that day, and the thunderstorms were looming in the distance there, and we decided it was time to pull the plug and save that for another day. 
Well, team, I love it when a plan comes together, man. Basically, what we set out to do here this morning, it did all that in spades. What do you say? We caught cobia today. Bait was easy. It was a great day for being offshore. We had no trouble slipping back in the mangroves. Before we get soaked, I tell you that may be your biggest problem with the Seaborne FX25XE. You may never want to leave the water.